heard. Reap. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. Mm -hmm. I'd love it if everyone in chat just turned around and said, you're not muted. We just wound you up. Oh, now it works. Hello. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. I don't know why, uh, why that was happening. I will, uh, I will restart the entire intro. Hi. Go back to the beginning. Hey. Oh. Sup? How you doing? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Good day. Good golly, gee whiz, whimpering pimpernickel, suffering succotash, oh my, walla walla bing bong, and welcome to the relay station. I could say a lot of things today about a lot of people. I could tell you about how Nakara is a professional narwhal wrestler who professionally wrestles narwhals. I could mention that Shiver is actually the second Brit to ever visit Pluto and is actually the reason that they decided to demote the best planet. I will remind you that Paul from the Astropub is a sexy, sexy portrait of a man well-dressed, has impeccable good taste, and is all around straight up and undoubtedly better than each of us in every single way and totally did not at all pay me to say any of this wink, wink. Right. No, sorry. Hold on. You're not supposed to say the wink. Thank you. You're welcome. Check the email. I could say all that, but I won't. Instead, I'm going to just say that uh, depression happens. Everyone feels it sometimes. Some people feel it all the time. It's really important to talk about it. If you're feeling it, uh, talk to someone. Find someone to talk to. And if you know someone that you think is feeling it, talk to them because it might be what they need. Uh, every single one of you matter. Please never think that you don't. Thank you. And Let's it, move on to okay Star to, Citizen. Say It's okay to be not okay. Yeah. 100%. What they said. Also, happy Pride, Pride Month, people. Yeah. That too. Choose that. Uh, hello, everyone in <laughs> chat. We went, from, we went from, from depression is a serious thing to happy Pride Month. Um, also, thanks, Ghost. That's 12 months in a row. That's a full year. Uh, you are insane. <laughs> Uh, also, Tobitej, thank you for the host and for all those shiny things earlier. Woo! Uh, so I would like to clarify that I am Canadian Syrup. Shiver is Ghost 404. Oh, yeah! And Astropub is Bree Serena. I guess I never changed so... those. One second. <laughs> I don't know who Bree Serena is. Um, do I have to person. try and sound like Ghost? Is, is Bree Serena... This is my best uh, impression. Is, is what... Who, uh, damn it. <laughs> uh, sure. So, we had stuff this week. Uh, and Nak no, there's Nakara. Sorry about that. I uh, forgot to change things. Shitter. Shitter. It's shitter. 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 Shitter battery. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would like to 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 mention the last time this we, me and Shiver were on the same podcast. It ended up on Reddit. Um, it, it so did. please, please, the same person who posted the last one on Reddit, please post this one too. Um, I hereby nominate Shiver for uh, Uber Minch and Uber Führer of of Star Citizen. All hail him and his final solution to deal with with Star Citizen uh, fans and all peoples. Um, uh, Something about 
concentration camps and <laughs> death squads. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, the worst bit was just sat here and all I could do was think of jokes and puns. <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to offend absolutely everyone on Reddit because they're all triggered snowflakes at this point about everything. Just not in good taste. It's well, it's been nice knowing you all. Uh, <laughs> we've had a good run. <laughs> Oh dear God! Oh, and that's gonna end up on Reddit because because people now watch this and try to discredit me and uh, and or everyone on on the relay station because hey, of what we say. It's what, it's what we're here for. We love you all equally. They're um, jokes. <laughs> Don't say anything, sir. Just be quiet. No, say it. Say it. Let it out. No, <laughs> no. I had to keep things in. Don't give in to the dark side, sure. <laughs> We have um, no, no, no! You've got the, you've got it this week. That's fine <laughs> if you want it this week. Uh, okay, let's move. Let's actually talk some Star Citizen now. Uh, calling all devs, they talked a bunch of stuff. Uh, life support, mm-hmm. life support's just going to be one thing in your ship. You got to repair it. Yeah, when it breaks, which will tie into the thing where you can open up the part and you can replace like individual components and fix them. And yeah. Actually, wait, no, hang on. There's something else I want to talk about before we even get to Star Citizens. Something that is more important and more amazing. Um, we'll let you vent. No, this isn't even, this isn't vent. Uh, wait, what? Yeah, vent. Wait, what? What? Uh, what? Vent. Oh, I hate you. Air vent. Uh, so this week on, I think it was Tuesday, uh, I, I found out last week, uh, that Fastcart couldn't make it to CitizenCon this week, this year, uh, because Fastcart had to buy a new Fastcart, um, and I decided to uh, to run a, a fundraiser, a GoFundMe for Fastcart, because Fastcart deserves to be at at CitizenCon, and and I had talked with Paul about you know making sure I could I could promote it during his stream, and I was going to talk about it on here, and you know do do what we could to get it completed and i put up the the campaign and it was funded like 18 18 hours hours? later later or something ridiculous and it never even made it to the weekend i never even had to to talk about it um fast cart's going to citizen con honestly like uh because of this awesome community yeah Mm -hmm. thank you like yeah thank you yeah I mean, it was fantastic. It was ridiculous how quickly it went. Like, by the time you asked me to talk about it, I said, yeah, sure, fine. And yeah. I started promoting it. Within, like, three hours of me promoting it, they were already... You, it, was already done. it was done. It was done. It was it was ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, I just... Um, yeah, it was it was really, really awesome of, of everyone who, who donated and everyone who, um, who, you know, spread it on social media and let, let people know about it. And, uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, fast cart, it's gonna be damn good seeing you there because uh, mm-hmm. you are, a, without a doubt, a shining pillar of the Star Citizen community. Um, thank you for everything you do, and uh, I'm glad we could help even in a small way. By the way, I'm gonna post this in the uh, in the uh, discussion, but uh, this was just posted on Reddit. Oh God, what was? I can't it's look at a, it there. It, it's an official like a preview of Arc Core. Oh, yeah, in the in the actual Arcor. game. Yeah. In the actual game. <clears throat> um, uh, Ghost, and it's, if he it's, takes um, the money and run, that is still a miracle. To clarify, support, which is cool. that that picture is from uh, the monthly report, which is mm-hmm. up this up already. So. Yep. Did you read it, uh, Nikar? Didn't read it. Because it's usually <laughs> because it's usually just a summary of everything they've already said in ATV. Well, they sometimes um, add other things. I didn't read it. I usually go through all the images because they usually have a bunch of kick-ass pictures in there. So, okay. Well, and, we... and guess what they had this month? A bunch of kick-ass pictures. Yes. Yeah. Um, they had pictures of the uh, the mining biomes on Hurston as well as the savanna biomes, and uh, they look awesome. Actually, Nakara, do you remember back in the day when we had to uh, summarize the monthly report each month because it actually contained information? That was before they gave us project updates in every ATV. Yeah. 
But yeah, yeah, no, we used to have to do that all the time because <laughs> the only place that information existed was the monthly report. Now they basically just Can take I... the script from ATV and copy and paste it into the monthly report every time. How has that not happened yet? <laughs> Sorry about that, Paul. It's a good idea because it's it's as close as you can get to an official transcript for ATV. So in case you don't know about this site out there that does unofficial transcripts for ATVs, you can go and look at the monthly report instead. But there is this site, I don't remember the name where these unofficial transcripts are and this dedicated... I think it's called Really. Transcription. Really? Really. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, oh man, I don't even know what I, I thought want it was to DNN this week. There's Marius D- News Network. Oh yeah, there is well, that. That, one. that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, well, you got you can't you can't forget SNN. That's the Sunjammer News Network. Uh, what else okay. do we want to talk about before we get into the long rant about how the community loses its shit over every little thing? Because uh, it's gonna happen. We I know, know it's this. I know it's gonna happen. I mean... But I want to talk. I want to do the news really quickly. Um, yes. We, we heard that they're going to do some stuff about venting of ships so that mm-hmm. entire ships won't vent. That's good. Uh, it's more accurate. And uh, hopefully it'll allow the freelancer a little bit of a fix because uh, maybe while they're doing a little fix, they'll realize that it needs larger fixes. Uh, the Connie stats, they talked a bit about that. Uh, point Now, they, they mentioned that point defense turrets are now unmanned turrets. Is that mm-hmm. just for the Phoenix, or is that for all? For everything. Sh- it's for everything, right? So also, there was also they 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 re- retracted the statement. Um, um, Disco Which said statement? on RTV, yeah, that the Phoenix does have two regular turrets. Oh yeah, they yeah. they didn't replace one with a auto turret or anything else like that. That the, the ATS yeah. regular turrets. He said at the very beginning, yeah. of RTV, <clears throat> said that they made a mistake. And that that's the actual case. Um, so either that he didn't clarify on if if they removed the auto turret or if it's been if it's 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 just still there, but it is they still have the two regular turret. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Basically, what they and they also qualified that point defense hasn't been like removed. They literally just renamed it to unmanned turrets. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's go through some of the videos. So. Uh, Mission Giver animations. They showed off Battaglia a bit. I'm happy. Yeah, because it it's a, it's a, it's it's not a man. Yeah, as a, as a, as a mission giver. <laughs> Actually, now I, I, I would like to point out, on playing on that, but... it it is not a man. All right, let that let that sink <laughs> in. You, you've got to look on the schedule and where it says player female models, right? And yeah. there's a female right there. So. I'm not. I. I don't think the play of female characters is a huge thing when it comes to release of Squadron Forty Two. I. I. We're. We're on one side of that. If that Keep, makes sense, we're either behind that or we're ahead of that. But I don't think that's the thing in Squadron keeping it back. I think no, what might be keeping it. I think what I've might be keeping one. it back is that if what they're showing us in ATV, <laughs> if what they're showing us in ATV is up to date. They're saying that they're working on mission givers and mission giver animations. You don't have a finished game without finished mission giver animations, right? Like, if they're still working on finishing up her animations, well, she's not done in the game. And neither are any of the other mission givers that they haven't finished. I, I, can someone, like, put that into words that make okay, sense for so, me? Because... So the the animations are important because there's going to be a lot more than canned animations in all of the different NPCs in in uh, Squadron 42 and there are going to be some NPCs who have canned anim- animations because there's going to be some especially side missions you're not going to have fully we'll, we'll have fully voiced but you'll have you won't have fully like acted character unless it has something to do with the main plot or main character um if you give an example look at something like uh, Fallout or Skyrim um, both of which have uh, side quests with main characters involved, and especially Fallout has like a lots of like companion quests that you have to do, which have nothing to do with main char- main main main, main storyline, but they still have fully like um, fully animated and all these other 
And um, for Squadron 42, we don't even have all of the full canned animation lists, let alone detailed animation lists for the character. Now, the real reason why Squadron 42 isn't out yet, because it's not done yet. Yep. I mean, we, we, we just we now are getting a lot of scanning. Cans? <laughs> cans, 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 cans. Um, uh, but no, I just we, wanted to say I really appreciated that joke by Ghost in chat. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was wonderful. That's all. I, I don't get it. Why are the all the NPCs in the game so pissy? They've been waiting a long time to talk. Oh. <laughs> uh, they showed us a bit of, of an update on the mining laser from the Prospector. And the animations of it, it looks pretty cool. <clears throat> it yes, looks it, like GLaDOS. It, yeah. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. It looks like it's going to kill us through insults and uh, self-esteem destruction. And testing. Don't forget and deadly testing. neurotoxin. Oh, sorry, yeah, I deadly, forgot about deadly that. Deadly neurotoxin. Mm -hmm. um, I am so looking forward to mining in uh, in 3.2. I 100% understand it will not be in any way shape or form finished but uh it, it would be great to see it get into the game yeah nda <laughs> thanks that's all i'm gonna say nda uh resource maps on on planets mm -hmm. yeah i like it it's good uh, it's good to see them coming along with this it, i'd this... rather them not i'd rather than not have the patchwork that they have now but i think it's just the first implementation oh yeah and looks at looks at things i'd like to have it more like smooth Smoothed, and yeah. like 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 overlaid so like instead of having it be patchwork, have the patchwork happen and then have, you know, either build the system or, or have them go through and like smooth out the, the regions where you can, mm -hmm. you can buy it. So the one, the one map they showed there of like the little various like biomes and kind of that kind of thing, that actually does kind of look like um, the Kerbal mapping. If you've ever seen Kerbal mapping for resources in, in space program, which is very similar, like the concept is you have this percentage of um, of this material, this percentage of this material. Is that... That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, yep. I, and, I do. Uh... I want to say on the clip that's playing right now uh, to everyone that was whining about how shitty the trees looked. Eat shit. <laughs> they use they they use the same thing that was used in Skyrim, used in The Witcher, used in like pretty much every major. It was even used in like Oblivion. Like the trees in Oblivion use the same thing. The, the what is it the tree something or other like speed tree, tree? Yeah. speed tree sky speed tree? tree no speed tree speed tree yeah it's so like guys they showed us off some trees that looked bad because they weren't done now look at these trees oh hey these trees look great eat shit because they because they've been around since like 2016 this is the same those are the same trees they've been working on since the 2016 demo <laughs> Yes, so and all of it, leak, just all of it will be alone. improved. <laughs> <laughs> and no, they won't leaf trees alone. They won't leaf they're trees They're going to probably alone. branch out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, have, uh, they only kind of have to, right? More, more in progress views on scanning, because... This is, uh, yeah, these are the older ones. Uh, and this is, they were mentioning they did not go with this option for the scanning visualizations, yeah. because it was too busy. Which makes me kind of wonder why they showed what they wouldn't be doing. Because they were showing all, what the iterations they went through were. Latest progress kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there's <clears throat> there's so much going on in that one. All the little blocks and Dots stuff. And stuff. Like, yeah, it's mm -hmm. hard, hard to it's, figure out what's going on. Yeah. So, that's exciting. That would, never, I mean, that, that would give anyone an epileptic fit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm curious to see what it looks like. Just as, as a reminder to people... Because scanning needed to come in for mining, it is currently only available in the Prospector in 3.2. Yeah. It will be available in other ships later on. Uh, AI in derelict ships, important. Uh, clearly not there yet. And has been delayed to 3.3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because but, it's clearly not there yet. <laughs> and yes, there, there's a reason. It's not ready. Uh, I think this is a really good time 
to remind everyone what CIG said right when they announced that they were going to be doing this whole quarterly patching system of whatever is ready is what we're going to get and whatever isn't ready, they're not going to hold the patch back until it's ready because that's what happened in previous years and that's why we all got pissed and that's why we went, you know, eight, nine months at a time without a bloody patch. If a feature is not ready, they will kick it to the next patch. Can that I? Can is I? How they're yes. Working. Yes. Yeah, Paul. Go ahead. Okay. So the, the here's a this is just a small thing, which is, um, in the past they have done this. They have um, delayed uh, implementation of something, and then in in three point one at least, they missed some things that didn't get added in, but then they were added in in three point one point one or three two. Yeah. Um. So it's fully possible that FPS AI. Could come in in a, in, a, in, a, in a hot fix between 3.1 and 3.2. It's already been added to the roadmap for 3.3, so I'd, I think it'll probably be pushed. Well, the thing was is that so was the gem, the Gemini shotgun was supposed to be in 3.2. It's in 3.1. Oh, really? It was added, it was added into into a interesting. Hot fix. So if it's available for them to add it in a hot fix, in a, in a, in a they may the okay. Patches, if it's working, they'll add it. That's that's the other thing to understand is that if it's working and it looks like they've been testing it on this. It's fully possible. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying that I'm hoping it's going to happen. All I'm saying is that it has happened before um, this year that they have added something. Um, now, it was a shotgun. It's not like it's yeah. a completely different thing like can this I, is. So it, could, it could be different. But So can I address another point that we had pop up? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, there were a lot of people who were overreacting on the fact that a couple of things were pushed out. Um, I will, wait, first wait, of all, wait, wait. Is community overreacting. No, <sighs> no, Shiver is a Nazi. That's 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 100%. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not a, you don't overreact. Okay, so right, let's not take um, that any Fuhrer, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was genius. All right, so um, first thing to remember, so a lot of people got angry because network bind culling was in the uh, roadmap, but it wasn't it not going to make 3.2. I would like to rem remind people again that the roadmap we see is actually their internal JIRA, and they already talked about network bind culling three or four months ago and said it will stay in 3.2 because it has to be finished internally by 3.2 because it's going to create a massive massive number of bugs in the game so they needed it done in june so that they could get it ready for object container streaming in 3.3 um in uh, you know end of september so yes i know it said it was coming in 3.2 but it's first of all it's not done which is actually probably the bigger problem although they still have three weeks to finish before uh um the end of june um but basically an... it was network bind culling was never going to be in 3.2 yeah ever there's, it's important to understand that it's there's difference between um network bind culling in uh in patch and done internally so yes. um it could be done by june but i'm sure well a lot of the network engineers were working on 3.2 to make sure that it was uh the, the optimizations were in 3.2 so they can they could they could fix it now mm -hmm. i guarantee you that it's not going to um be anything maybe the same probably about the same as what we're getting with 3.1 in terms of um, in terms of you know performance boosting so don't expect something major but at the same time just because it's not completely finished right now doesn't mean that everything else is out the window and gnashing of teeth mm -hmm. and wailing of you know throw your hands in the air and 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 wave them like you just don't care and, you know. the other thing the other thing to note is that network bind culling was never going to work without object container streaming so there's literally no way to do one without the other yeah so yeah. it was always 3.3 it just looked like 3.2 now fps combat ai is the only thing that was really legitimately moved out of um 3.2 and we and can see I saw, why. Yeah, yeah, it's a little rough. And I just wanted to mention that I saw a lot of people going, oh, on Reddit specifically, because that's usually where I live. Um, 
a lot of people going, oh, that means that Hurston's going to get pushed out of 3.3 and there won't be anything in 3.3 at all. And all the content's going to get shoved out because they can't get anything done on time. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> they moved take one feature. Let's take a step back. Take a nice big breath. Yeah. Let's look at this logically. Okay. <laughs> and so. so that's actually what I wanted to do for a moment here. Um, one of the things that actually is cool about 3.3 is if you look at the roadmap, a lot of the things in 3.3 are almost done already. Um, they've been working on a lot of these things for a long time. I'm going to insert myself a little bit and say, yeah, also, go ahead. if they, if, if it is, if CIG is showing it like, like this, what they're showing right now, which is in 3.3, by the way, um, if they're showing it, it means that they're proud of it, which means that they're, that it's, oh, they're close to being done or they're on the pathway. We haven't yep. heard anything about OCS since February, and then we heard something about it today because they posted on Reddit or on uh, Spectrum, and it was posted on yep. Um And we only saw two updates for the FPS AI, two. One of which was, hey, it's buggy, doesn't work. Second one's, hey, it's better, but it's still buggy and doesn't work. Yep. So mm -hmm. the reality is, is if they're not talking about it, it's because it's not ready. If they are talking about it, then it, you should be okay. Yep. And look how much Hurston and OCS talk and, uh, you know, all the other stuff we've gotten that are supposed to be in 3.3. This is a really good, there, but... it's a really good opportunity to talk also about how far out some of these things are being worked on. Um, we saw last week um, in the Squadron 42 update, the AI combat styles. They were showing like the behavior, the, the different personalities and stuff. You guys saw that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That is in 3.5. Okay. Yep. <laughs> they're, they're working on it actively right now. It's not out until March of 2019. But they're <laughs> so proud. They're, the thing is, yeah. they are proud, proud of how of it. it looks right now because right now, and, and it might only be those, that one situation, right? They were talking about how I, I think I can actually pretty easily grab the video. One second. Let's, Go back to that was June second. Uh, recoil control room. I mean, strap, just one, for reference as well. When they're talking about animation. FPS AI, they're not talking about FPS AI that you would get in Fear, Doom, or what other FPS games the kids are playing these days. Uh, they're um, playing Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> that's got no ai uh, no <laughs> no it doesn't but uh kids are dumb enough that it acts the same <laughs> you see don't make reference about me listen to the rest of these lovely people but like this is not regular ai this isn't as simple as creating nav points making the ai aware that there is cover at certain nav points popping out shooting etc you know you know your standard ai yes no query whatever this is the fps ai for subsumption so it's subsumption and the fps ai so it's like do i need to brush my teeth or do i need to shoot this motherfucker in the face do i need to cow behind <laughs> a box just... or go to work that it's it's a lot more complex than has been uh, done before on this sort of scale. So With they are minimum, creating yeah. this from yeah from scratch essentially to put in experiment and whatever has come before has just you know it doesn't really matter what's been used on the engine before. This is new. It's also important to remember that the people who built the Cry Engine work for CIG. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's been coming through in the last two years it's been very obvious i think even there's even a couple of different um <clears throat> i know there's at least one article that essentially said that the future of cry engine isn't starting because they have all the original cry engine mm -hmm. engineers and if you liked crisis one and crisis two and crisis uh, three to a degree um <laughs> <laughs> one and two were better than three third? <laughs> uh there was only there was one good the, there, there was, was un the only one good crisis game and it was actually far cry one Oh, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> but but um, it, it, if, you, if, you can, if you remember Crisis, the original, you know, two Crisis, the FPS was, or the, uh, the AI was actually fairly decent, if not pretty revolutionary for, for its time. I wouldn't say it's... It was good level, AI, it's just level. really too bad that the game sucked. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I need, I need to tell a quick story... About okay, Fortnite. 
I need to tell a quick story about Fortnite before okay. we switch over and let Paul Star rant Citizen for a podcast. while. I know, but I went to a museum the other week with uh, with uh, Mrs. Eris and our daughter. Uh, museum of Science and Technology here in Ottawa. Great museum. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got a... They've, they've revamped it. There's a sound area, right? And there's a whole bunch of cool little sound things and you can practice doing, like seeing how sound waves work. So, and they've got a quiet room. And it's a, it's a little tiny room with all the baffling and all the, the sound dampening stuff. And it's supposed to be completely quiet inside. And you walk inside and there's a group of six kids watching Fortnite on a phone, laughing and making farting sounds. And I told them to get the fuck out. Well, you can. I I old manned them because I don't <laughs> give a shit if you think Fortnite is cool and funny. This is a goddamn quiet room. Get the fuck out. So I I one hundred percent curmudgeoned them. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Hundred percent. I don't care. I'm an old man. Fortnite sucks. Get a better Harris? game. Eris, yeah. Welcome to my welcome to my life. Oh, I know. <laughs> I teach those those oh. those those little snot nosed assholes uh, oh. on a regular basis. I know. And the amount of times I've had to say, "Get off of fucking Fortnite," uh, and they're like, "I'm not playing Fortnite." I'm like, "Good, good. Then t- get off of PUBG." Like, Mr. Mr. Shelley, you you just because you you play video games doesn't mean you're cool. You're cool. I don't care. Get off the freaking phone so I can teach you some knowledge. Otherwise, oh God, you're going no, to fail no, the class. Jokes. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Kids suck. Uh, straight up, I was never that much of an asshole when I was a child. Parents, uh, take care of your children. Teach them some manners. Because uh, God damn. God You damn. might not have been, but there were kids when we were young that were that bad. Yeah, Lock but I wasn't. Marks. Karl Marx had the idea of children. Now, this is not something I personally advocate before. <laughs> now I'm being accused 100% of being personally a advocating. All of a sudden. You know, one week I'm a fascist, the next week I'm a communist. We'll see. I'm very, you know, polar partisan. But Karl Marx had the idea that all children should be put away in like a boarding school until they are legally an adult. Isn't that they what the British did? Born bred no not only for snot-nosed kids that could afford to be bugged ah, and right. have sex with pigs they become the prime minister <laughs> um <laughs> but karl marx wanted to literally all of a put sudden, all the children of away just come and grab shiver and take him away <laughs> listen well it wouldn't be the course... fucking pigs would it <laughs> <laughs> Political discourse is a very long-standing tradition in in in, uh, in, in England, just like sipping tea yeah. and and uh, uh, standing in lines. Um, oh, it's true. <laughs> but he wanted all children put away in boarding schools and not actually released until they were legally adults. That's how much he hated kids. And it, you you start to think to yourself, it wasn't entirely a bad <laughs> idea because there are some people out there who should just be put away until they're adults. Wait, why Why do we release them when they're adults? Second chance. Mm. Okay, so, Cause, Paul. Because something that's, I don't know, something. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've gone a little bit off the rails. Sorry there, Shadden. Think? Thanks, for, thanks for drawing <laughs> us back. Uh, Paul, uh, before we started this podcast. Uh, hey, the, we should the, probably mention that 3.2 is an Evo Cotty, eh? We should. Hey. <laughs> we should actually mention that, that 3.2 is an Evo Cotty. Now, Paul, I know that uh, before the podcast started, you you yourself had a little bit of a um, well, a rant we a that you wanted a, a discussion. You you had yeah. some some points you wanted to make, and I believe some of them are are, are points that you kind of made on Twitter recently. Did you not? Yes, and I've made and, it before on on several captains' tables. Yeah, um, and on several several relay stations actually. Um, I mean, it's it's a point that you make frequently. Here's 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 the here's here's something that I want to point out that the person who posted the last uh, relay station a video that ended up on Reddit that everyone lost shit over uh, that person who posted it I talked with them in in messaging and I told them like hey dude what's going on like you know he he has a lot of like things he's like generally 
introspective about the game. And I talked with him about his, about like, what, 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 you know, what his perspective is. And his perspective was, is that he didn't fucking buy the game for a star citizen. He bought it for two. And in his perspective, he's like, I haven't heard damn fuck all from squadron 42 since December, even though we we're supposed to have a full fucking roadmap in the very beginning of the year. And it got me thinking about if I was a person who just backed this game for squadron 42, I would be absolutely pissed right now livid because it's like i wanted fucking wing commander and for some reason wing commander keeps getting pushed back because it's not ready what's the reason and there's no real discussion about it like with star citizen at least you have oh well this is the issue this is the issue this is the issue so you can see what the problems are but with with question 42 fuck all like there's no information out there like you get it every once in a while in in in, in like an atv but it's like the address went from 30 people to 90 people. Great. That's not a fucking exp explanation as to why you, it's not out yet. So, <laughs> so, you know, I, well, I don't necessarily agree that like hundred percent, we need a hundred, we need to be told absolutely everything that's going wrong with Squadron 42. Um, I think the roadmap needs to come eventually. And I think the reason it hasn't is that they're not that close. It, it, it is, but they need to say that uh, that's the problem. So and, I, and I said this, I said this on, on, on Twitter, and uh, I think um, Disco Lando took it a little personally because yeah. I, because I pulled the questions off of um, Ask the Devs. And he said, listen, there's these three things that need to happen, and if they don't happen, then, it, which is essentially like, uh, do I have someone who can answer the question? Um, is there, is, the, is it, is it in, in any kind of state to be answered, and do we actually know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and if it's C, refer back to A to B. You know, if it's not C, yeah. then it's refer back. To B. And um, and I clarified, and I think I want to clarify it again. I have no problem with calling all devs. Calling all devs is a fantastic show that needs it's to a great show. happen because it, it gives us access to devs that a lot of people like. Yeah, most of like us or even active Reddit or or Spectrum users can ask questions to devs, but not a lot of people know that. You know, um, so. That wasn't my issue. My issue was that these questions are being asked on the calling all devs and nobody is referring this to Chris Roberts or Aaron. No one's mm -hmm. referring this to the higher up management because it's obvious that it's just Disco Lando. It's the community team in Disco Lando who are dealing with. It. And if the community team in Disco Lando are dealing with this and it's not being referred to by pe to people who are like, hey, like who's the PR manager? Like this is, this is a serious issue with Star Citizen. I don't know who the PR manager is. I don't know who, who, whom they're 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 because i know they're hiring for a um a brand manager um you know these these um the, these people should be figuring out how to talk about this and the answer for any of these three questions can be we don't know but then the answer has to be why don't you know why don't you know about squadron 42 road why don't you know about when ships are going to be released and why don't you know when when insurance what, what insurance is why explain to that to us in, in, in a way that that people can understand and just like ocs and and et in um um object buying calling i want yeah. yeah. calling an object container streaming and people would understand yeah people will rage but people rage about for a week Everything. about something they don't like yeah. and then they and then they get over it but the the, the more you, information you get out there the the less of a problem it's going to be uh so <clears throat> I agree with most of what you say. Uh, some of my thing, some of the points I want to make. One, I backed only for Squadron Forty Two. I backed before Star Citizen was a thing. In the Kickstarter, Star Citizen was not planned. Well, like Star Citizen was the end goal down the road after Squadron Forty Two. I backed for Squadron. At the same time, I'm not uber pissed that squadron isn't out because guess what kingdom hearts 3 isn't out uh freaking where's half-life 3 where's where are any of these games that we want guess what games take time and i'm okay Half -Life not being made. <laughs> it's been made four times and trashed four times because it wasn't good enough and i'd where's rather say too I'd rather they make it and trash it than release something that's not good enough. Stop trying to put time limits on games. Because guess what you get when you put time requirements on games? You get Mass Effect Andromeda. Eat shit! Do you now, remember 
a but, Call of Duty, but, they actually officially said, we're going to get out one Call of Duty every year. And then people actually did say, look, this is shit. This and, is stale. No, no, this don't, is don't use that. Fucking game. Shiver, shiver. They did that with Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed was once yearly. And people called it out uh, Syndicate and Unity, I think, so much that they said, okay, no, we're actually going to take an extra year here to release Origins. And guess what? Origins was a good game. They took the time to make it a good game. If Squadron 42 is not ready, it's not ready. At the same time, we know, I know for a fact, uh, several months ago, actually, Jake and I did an interview with Eric Kyron Davis. Uh, unfortunately, Jake's hard drive died the next morning. That interview mm -hmm. was lost and was never this posted. Was, uh, CitizenCon in 2016, right? No, no, no. It wasn't even CitizenCon. It was just we, we oh. did an interview with him over Skype. Um, he was sitting there. He had the Squadron 42 roadmap next to him. He was able to look over from where he was talking to us and look at the Squadron 42 roadmap. The roadmap exists. In my, it's the internal JIRA. It's, yeah, it, it, it exists. exists. It exists. In my personal opinion, they won't show it to us because it's going to show something that we don't want to hear and that they're not ready for us to hear in that 2019, maybe not even 2019. And they don't want to say that, right? What I, what That's I think why we don't have a Squadron 42 roadmap. I think the answer is that they're going to release the roadmap when they're within a year of yeah. release, in their opinion. And I don't think we're there yet. No. Here's, I think... But, but but this is all fine and dandy that us us talking about it. Yep. The question I have is why hasn't CIG said that? And you're a hundred. Well, hundred well, percent. No, I don't. I don't give a shit. Yep. Chris Roberts said in December that they, or even the last October, yep. that Absolutely. they were going to release so, a Squadron Forty Two roadmap sometime early because a lot of people were asking for it, including Jake and 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 a lot well, of other people here on this on this podcast. So I don't yep. get care. Like it's, this explanation is great, but. Well, I'm, I'm, not Paul, to, I'm not Paul, trying to excuse I'm, I'm trying hang to explain. On. <laughs> Paul, I'm 100% with you on that. I really want to know as well. Uh, one thing I'm kind of interested in is actually next week. E3. Star Citizen is not always at E3. Star Citizen is part of the PC Gaming E3 show this year. They're now they have. Show it there. I don't know. I will, I will bet you a thousand dollars they won't show it there. We'll see. Because it's, yeah, not, a, it's but, not a wide, it's not I, something I for they, wide. But they what, set themselves, Nikara, they will no, announce Nikara, Citizen Con Nikara, release at their Shiver, own event. Sure. Nakara? Eric? Yeah, I'm here. What were you trying to say? Oh, I was just trying to say that, that the roadmap is not... For a massive public event on a huge stage in front of millions of people, it is for the backers alone. Um, if they show anything of Squadron Forty Two at at PC the PC Gaming uh, show, it'll just be a trailer um, of some kind, like uh, maybe as part of the um, gameplay that they showed us with the vertical slice. Just because that they don't like to do. At, at big public events like Gamescom and E3, they don't like to do the backer thing. They like to do the engagement thing where we're like, hey, does anyone know we exist? We exist. Come buy our game. <laughs> um, so Fire M says Star Citizen's not going to be at E3. People are walking around and there are people at a booth. Incorrect. Uh, Star it's Citizen is show. featured as part of the PC gaming show along with Cyberpunk 2077 and uh, friggin' uh, Sim Hospital. Uh, Three Point Hospital. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Three Points Hospital is... F I'm excited for that, okay? Just, Me too. Sorry, uh, it, was just, it was like this gigantic, yeah. enormous PC game that's been coming forever and people are excited about. This gigantic, <laughs> enormous PC game that's been coming forever and people are excited about. And Sim Hospital. Yeah. <laughs> Which are you more excited for? You didn't even for? pick Theme Hospital. You went with the really obscure one. <laughs> okay, I, I want to say one more thing uh, before we start moving over to questions. Paul, 
one of the things that you're saying, and I think this is, and I think this is a slightly different point that we have to take, and it's a point that I think that's really, really important. We hear a lot from devs now, uh, which is actually great. Calling all devs is fantastic. All the interviews with devs on, on ATV are great. I absolutely love the weekly project updates from, from the, various, the various people. Uh, thanks for the subscription rivals. But here's the thing. Uh, they hype up every week. Oh man, Chris Roberts is doing ATV this week. Guess what Chris Roberts says? Hey everyone, welcome to ATV. We had a great week and now let's hear from the devs. And yeah. that, that is all we hear from Chris anymore. And that's all we hear from, from any of the top anymore. Where's Tony Z? Where's Aaron? Where's Chris? I want to hear from Chris. I would really, really like to hear from Chris. And not just a, hey, everyone, we had a good week. Here's what we did this week. I'd like to hear a, here's where mm -hmm. we are. Here's where we're going this is what's happening. And I'm really, really hoping that we get something like that at E3. That was, I don't know uh, if we will, but I really, really hope. That um, was the, the, um, the, uh, I can't remember what the occasion was, but not that like a little while ago, we had an, had an AT, an RTV that was an hour of Jared talking to Chris. Yeah. And it was awesome. Yeah. But then I, I would like it to be more than once every six months. We need to hear from on every day, and he gets an update. It's going to be like, well, I just put the side panels on my gold-plated rocket so I can wave <laughs> <to the> bastards <laughs> from space. <laughs> I I still think we need more more frequent Chris uh, communication because again, and I've told this story before. One of the one of the main things that got me really interested in the project back in the Kickstarter was when Commander Llama asked a question in the Kickstarter like comments and. Chris responded to his question. And that to me was, okay, it's not just like, this is, this is Chris's project. He mm. is invested in it. And I kind of feel like we've lost some of that investment. Now I'm not saying that Chris isn't doing everything he can to make the project happen and isn't involved. I but think we it's on don't the other side of things. It. I think at the beginning he did a lot of PR stuff because there they were still PR ramping people? and there wasn't a lot of things for him to do in terms of development. Yeah. I think now he's probably ridiculously busy with decision making stuff. Um, uh, like they actually mentioned, they mentioned this week they took some stuff off of his plate because he was so busy. Yeah. Um, and like, I know, but I, 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 but I think it, I think he does need to come up for air a little bit more often. Yeah. And Aaron Roberts, like, I don't even remember last time we saw him. I know he's global head of production, so he's probably busier than hell. <laughs> we saw him last time. We saw him. He was at um, Britison Con, and he have. In fact, oh yes, let me, yes. Let me let me uh, add another thing. The last time we saw Aaron Roberts, he was at Britison Con, and he gave an interview to to Board Gamer. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I constantly say this because this community is very different from most communities. I love Board Gamer. Board Gamer is a great content creator. He deserves mm -hmm. his hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube and all the all the stuff he does. Um, and, but the problem is, is that Board Gamer has a hundred thousand subscribers, and even if there's only a million people who have backed Star Citizen, that's still only one tenth of the backer base follows mm -hmm. Board Gamer. Yeah. One tenth. So, if that's the case, then you need to start looking at um, uh, at how you get your information out. Because Aaron Roberts actually said, uh, or say, back it up a little bit. Board Gamer actually asked Aaron Roberts about the Squadron 42 roadmap. And Aaron Roberts actually responded saying, it's there and it's in the works. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's not it's the answer. Get information. Because it, that's that's basically what they've been saying since like last October. Um, yeah, but the problem about that is saying that and then is 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 saying like saying um weeks, not months. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> weeks not months it's the same shit don't don't bring weeks not months back with this goddamn roadmap either put it put it to bed and say listen we need x y and z and we're not there yet to give you guys a roadmap um i mean we all have answers for it and most of us realize that it's because it's not anywhere ready and because roadmap how they how they develop games and all that stuff is different from your traditional not different it's more but it's more this is the more the modern way things like scrum and sprints and all these sorts of things um, so that the further away you are from the final product, the less likely your predictions are going to happen. But as you continue and work 
get better at doing and closer you get towards the final product, you get a better idea the closer you get. Um, and if that's the case, that means that we're not anywhere near close to the Squadron 42 roadmap or uh, release because the roadmap, if we had a roadmap, they have a good idea of when it's going to release once they have a roadmap. So Two things. One, uh, we need more questions. Right now, we only have four. Uh, if we oh don't, uh, if we don't get more questions, I'm going to sing um, All Star by Smash Mouth. Oh, dear. The new American, the new American anthem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that said, I, I uh, Tofu Der Fleischer says 12 people, company, everything in its shoes, nearly every decision with wide influences. Now there's 500 people and 500 different inputs. It's, it has to be massively filtered to fit into Chris's time. Yes. Uh, yep. Uh, you won't catch me saying that Chris doesn't have a lot of other things to do. Uh, there's a reason they got rid of 10 for the chairman because 10 for the chairman was taking up too much of Chris's time. hundred percent. And it was because 10 <laughs> for the chairman was, was every, every week and it was too much, but I would really like to see maybe a bi-monthly or a tri-monthly, like a quarterly this update. Is, update. The chairman. Chris, Chris, yeah. An hour, once every three months, an update from the chairman. Hell, even make it live so that it doesn't take more yeah. than an hour. Don't, don't, don't edit RTV. it. And, and it's put it on RTV. live, put it, put Chris on RTV once every three months, and he only answers two questions in the hour because that's how long it takes Chris to answer any questions. And we all know that, but it doesn't matter. It's still Chris answering questions. It's what we need. Uh, I, I've been talking a lot about other things that I want. I'm, I've got so many things that I'm trying to do and I'm honestly having some difficulty and I'm, I'm in that, like that stage that I'm sure almost everyone gets to where like, I don't care too much about star citizen right now. Again, like I, I keep getting to that point and I keep, I keep running really and keep doing these shows and stuff, but like there's not, it's so incremental the process Mm -hmm. that yeah i'm kind of interested but it's also the summer and it's everyone summer, anyone yeah. who's followed anyone summer who's followed, sucked for star citizen yeah. <laughs> yes i mean I, I i posted that on reddit like someone was like oh this is uh, why is it everything looks so bad right now it's because it's summer it's summer because it's, it's, it's uh, like for some fucking reason <laughs> likes to eat their own foot during the summer <laughs> Or um, which they do every summer. Yep. There's every one summer. thing they do. If it's not if it's not weeks, not months, it's the twenty seven thousand dollar Legatus pack. Oh. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's whatever, whatever there was. They they're didn't not. have to advertise it's, that. Give it to the people that need it, but don't put it anywhere. Like just, I'm not, just... not going to talk about the Legatus pack because the Legatus pack is <laughs> it's it's been talked about by bigger people and people who have no idea what they're talking about and. Then other people threaten to but rape if, children look, because look, of that, one, and it's, two, it's it's such a bullshit that I don't. Two want things. To get my two things. Wait into two things, and then we're gonna go to questions. I'm taking over two things, and we're going to questions. One, if you don't know what you're talking about and you haven't done any goddamn research, don't fucking talk about it. Come to relay. Ask us what's going on. Go to board gamer. Ask them what's going. Do some freaking research. It's not that goddamn hard. Two, if anyone out there if any one of you ever threatens to go and rape and murder someone's family for fuck's sake it's a game for fuck's sake guys and i know no one here did but like holy shit what's wrong with you don't do it don't fucking do that ever to anyone period well just keep in mind you could end up in jail for that yeah. i hope i hope that whoever did does does uh, here's here's the thing they deserve have, to be in jail i don't know if everyone else here has but i have been on the receiving end of of threats like that before yeah um, same here. from from people who really hate star citizen i had one person who was hoping that i got fired and that i got from my job and that i was broke and that i was a crying horrible mess um within a year and, and like wishing me like horrible shit on me um because I stream Star Citizen and because I talk about it. Yep. Like there are some seriously fucked up individuals out there on on all sides. So I, as someone who's received these, these kind of things before, I uh, if you are a fan, you're not a fan, if you're a fanatic or crazy person, 
please stay the fuck out of my community because yeah. this is ridiculous. We shouldn't have to say that. It's, it's not it, okay it, to threaten people. It's not even a community I, I've thing. I've had it. I've had it, and I've met. You know, I, I haven't met many people from the community, but I've met a lot at uh, the Citizen Con I went to, and it was amazing how nice, friendly, personable people are in the community in person. You know, I mean, I, I as you can imagine, when I go outside, I'm not used to people being particularly friendly with me. So it was a pleasure <laughs> to change for me. And then, uh, you know, because of whatever someone disagrees with you of the way you run your hardware that, that's what it gets down to is a slight disagreement over about something that doesn't really fucking matter you get this abuse and you think what do you hope to achieve here apart from well, what do you, do you think i'm going to turn around my whole life because of something anonymous someone said what 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 do you hope to achieve here what is the point of this the only thing you're doing is making me dislike more people just as I was starting to think a lot of you are all right and then something like that happens and it just that's what sticks with you it's not the nice things it's those really nasty things and I hate to say it I've not had an issue with the non-star citizen crowd really I mean that they've the only clashes that you know you, you you poke them they poke back don't mm. don't don't poke any fucking one you knob just 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 they've got an opinion so fucking what you've got a different opinion who cares man just just relax <laughs> Two sit thanks back. Follow. you know it's gonna be nice don't 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 forget we're all people we've all got why feelings you, why are you so mad it's on the game yeah have a why smoke so and a pipe you know have a bong and a blinch don't smoke call don't don't threaten violence against anyone don't threaten violence against anyone that anyone knows don't threaten violence against family members of people just don't threaten violence period. unless it's and in don't game. unless it's what in game is fine unless it's oh i'm gonna i'm gonna blow your fine. head off don't give a shit in the next yeah. round fine. fine don't fine. like <sighs> don't be a psychopath don't don't swap people don't <laughs> don't no it's it's like yeah. But but the, th the problem I have is that this should be common fucking sense. It should and be. And the fact that and the fact that I saw people online defending, saying, "Oh, this was probably a goon." It's like it doesn't matter who the fuck it is. No. Say it's not cool and walk away from it. It is not cool to like, do it to that's, anyone. That's how you deal Look, with it. Goons have their own opinions. I think I, I actually I know a number of goons. A number of people that subscribe to something awful are actually some of my best goddamn friends. I know a number of people. Some of my best friends hate Star Citizen, and think it's a scam. I don't care that they do, and they don't care that I like Star Citizen. Because guess what? Star Citizen is, and should be, an infinitesimal part of everyone's life. Infant fucking tesimal. Because it's a video game. It's, it's a fun. video game. If you're not having fun, if you have that much of an emotional reaction to something that's meant to be fun, you're not invested in the right way. Okay, question time. Because I could go on about this yeah. forever, but, but yeah, I, I will say this is this is something that has to happen because I, I personally didn't really like. I've heard about these things in the past, and I've been like, whatever. It's just some crazy people. But the fact that it happens, and now people are like saying, "Oh, see, they're not. No, no one's stepping forward and saying it's uh, this is bad." So they're defending this. So they all believe in this. It's like, no, we don't. But the fact that we have to step forward in order to prove people that to prove to people that we don't condone fucking threatened threats and or violence or threats of violence is kind of ridiculous. Eric, it's not the majority by a long shot. Yeah. It it's is not. literally one, two individuals at most. All right. And gr grand majority. The problem is I think we say, accept the fact that you're all right. Oh, the problem is wait, you say one a more few thing. bad apples and then everyone loses One their more shit. thing to every, and this is this is even more in general to everyone. Uh, if you guys uh, happen to be playing a game with a girl, don't harass her. Don't try to get her number. For fuck's oh, sake. God. Just seriously, for fuck's sake. Okay? Why, okay. Do I, why do you have to know someone's gender to play a game with them? Who gives a fuck where you keep your reproductive organs? Period. I just want to play a game. <laughs> Period. I keep them on a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine are actually kept, I, I mine are actually kept in Mrs. Harris's pocket. Uh, <laughs> is that what you call it? <laughs> yes, 
It is. I, I, I will uh, have to say, I, I actually sexually identify as the shelf that uh, that Nakara puts his stuff on. <laughs> is that why you've got wood? Yes. Oh, All okay. Time, baby. Uh, let's get to some of these questions. <laughs> oh, man. oh, that was a bit of a rant. I loved it. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> what just happened? Uh, where okay, are we? so I'm going to say right now, I yeah. reserve five minutes at the end of the show to yes. talk about real yeah, space. Yeah, you need to talk yes. about SpaceX at the end. Uh, Fastcart uh, asks... No, actually, not about SpaceX. About real space. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fastcart asks... Is not real space. What do you think we missed from the EA press conference Here's exactly what we missed. EA trying about uh, out a bunch of games with no microtransactions and or microtransactions, but no loot boxes uh, that are all horribly, horribly evident that they removed loot boxes at the last minute and tried to <laughs> yep. shoehorn Wait. in something that made sense. Hang on. I have to stop you there. If you want to continue, that's $80. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fastcart also asks... Shiver, do you get to wear a special hat after becoming the Ubermensch? I'm not. I don't want to deal with the Reddit comment from that as well. <laughs> uh, hey, Tugan, welcome oh. to uh, whatever the fuck this is. Uh, Fastcart also asks, who should be the voice actor for the Star Citizen version of GLaDOS? Paul. I should, yes. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, a two-year-old chicken salad sandwich. <laughs> I love so these questions. God. I love this person. Whoever this is, thank you. Yeah. You uh, asked all the right questions. On the topic of over and underpowering components, would it be something that can be done on the fly or does it require setup in advance? Will there be requirements like some third-party software, for example, jailbreaking, or actual physical tools on hand or a hybrid of the two? Maybe even something built into a component and then simply flipping a dial and voila, muy bueno y relay. What, what was the beginning? He's talking about like uh, overclock components? Overclocking. Is so... It is it overclocking or power? Because you can, because they are. You can do both, and they're both separate. You can get like that small performance boost by putting more power. Yeah, to it's a it's over and underpowering, yeah. over and underpowering components. Yeah. Um. That is. Con it's going to be controlled through power management, which might be a little cumbersome in a single person ship, just because you have so many things to pay attention to. But in multi crew ships, you'll probably have someone who can devote quite a bit of attention to power management. You'll and be, can like, be like, hey, we're about to fire. I'm gonna just power all my all of all of my Nakara. energy into weapons. Nakara, give us full power on forward phasers. Aye exactly. aye, Captain. Now full I just power wanna, other, phasers. I want to also mention full power that shields. There, <laughs> there will be um there will be internal components inside the uh the part that you're talking about that you can replace <laughs> to make it better there will also be the ability to overclock um components um mm -hmm. using weapons labs uh most and famously present on the endeavor if you spec it out that way so and the it's important to understand that that overclocking is going to be slightly different think of, think of overclocking i've been playing a lot of fallout because i've been i've been uh 76 um, trying to like well, I've been practicing because my, my theory is is that they're using Fallout 4 as a uh, as as the engine, and yeah. um, because it's possibly going to be multiplayer or co-op, they're going to remove that. Because it as a uh, yeah when you when you introduce a multiplayer aspect. So I've been practicing. They're going to have to make their FPS gameplay better. Than that. Uh, Fallout 4's FPS is pretty fucking it's not bad. It's, it's like really, pretty. It's, it's really pretty good. good. Fallout yeah. 4 is actually that's is, that's is needed say, in some cases. So Fallout 4 is a hell of a lot of fun in VR. Oh, I'm sure um, it is. But um. But I've been practicing, like, managing, you know, without that. That's part of, part of the reason I've been playing. And I also never really beat it, so I wanted to go back and try to actually play it and beat it. But um, one of the things that they have in Fallout 4, if those of you haven't played it, is they have a legendary system where, like, certain enemies will drop legendary gear. Now, that's essentially the same kind of gear as you normally have, only it's got a modification to make it slightly better. Um, I can imagine overclocking being something like that, where you can make modifications here or there, and it'll make something slightly better but it'll also make something slightly worse. So mm -hmm. think of overclocking as um, tweaking in a way that you are going to get a better shield emitter, but it's gonna use more power yep. and yep. will be less, it'll recharge slower, but it's stronger. They, so, they've said that all along. It's going yeah. to be, and you're gonna be able to do the same thing to say like 
FPS weapons, right? And mm-hmm. you can uh, overclock the the fire rate, so you can get a faster fire rate. But if you go to a faster fire rate, one, you run out of ammo faster, which is pretty obvious. But two, your weapon's going to heat up faster, and mm-hmm. the recoil yep. is going to be worse. So you are go- and, and one of the things that they've already talked about this this range to be lowered, all that kind of stuff. It's it's going to be where do you want your balance to be? Because personally, I really like, I don't like full auto. I don't like a high fire rate. So I'm going to take weapons that have a low fire rate that I can do more damage on each shot and shoot more without reloading and without overheating rather than get a super high fire rate that you know someone else might like and they might like a super f- high fire rate because they want to get in close and turn a sh- corner and and blah yep. and dead right so and, and that's and gonna we're, be for we're not everything. just talking about weapons either yeah this is it's everything all the components all the components yep and, and i mean especially with ships the trade-offs can be huge like you can be like oh i want a super high fire rate weapon so you put one on but then you're generating huge amounts of heat, so you need a huge radiator to radiate the heat. But then your signal goes through the roof, so yep. you're like, okay, well, I'm going to accept the fact that, that I'm I'm, I show up like I a am fucking light stealth. bulb on radar. Yeah. If I fire, <laughs> everyone knows where I am. Yeah. Exactly. So and, 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 girls and, like that. <laughs> and then, but it's also important that that's different from power management under underpowering and overpowering. <laughs> The change also how much wear and tear your parts take yeah so overclocking is is one thing which is completely changing the component stats whereas overpowering underpowering systems is going to be something that's more um something you can do with your your, your standard stock um stuff but will give you different performance ratings you know? um, i i like want to s- i want us to move on now but uh, seriously, two-year-old chicken salad sandwich, that was an excellent question. Keep them yes, up. Yes, it was a fantastic uh, question. Fastcart has a question. Uh, question for Eris and Nakara. Would you please stop burning down our White House? It's been going Objection. on for 200 years now. Actually, that was Shiver. <laughs> Canadians didn't do that. That it was, was Shiver. The that, that was the War of 1812. Yeah, That's that was the, the British invasion of 1814 when the... the British burned down the White House. Yeah. The, um... And it was, it, was, it? it was on right, terror because... To, it was uh, the Americans to an, bring an down American York. attack on York, Ontario. Yep. No, we burned down Toronto. If I remember it, York. It was called. It York. was York. York. Time. Uh, it was York. York uh, became Toronto, but it was originally no. called York. So yeah. we responded, and by we, I mean the British and the Canadians, because we were the yeah. British. But it's I believe important. I believe it was regular British like like soldiers from the UK yeah. as well as they only recruited militia from the Canadians. Yeah, yeah. yeah but exactly. but the militia was part of burning down the White House, burning so there the were White some House. Canadians involved. I, I was gonna say I was gonna say the um yeah. the, the as the historian Canadians were involved, but it was a British US thing, and and yeah. in yes, Canada totally. wasn't. The other understand like, and I don't clearly, know a lot about clearly, Canada Paul, history. as as a historian, you are now more qualified to be the president of the United States of America than the president of the United States of America. We don't want to. I don't want to get in that. In that in we're that not. Way. We're moving on <laughs> to the next question. <laughs> Ashley oh. asks, "How would you change?" Sorry, it, as a Canadian, the past week has been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yes. how's, how's, that, how's that summit going? You were burning a nuclear. Oh, actually, the summit. Yeah, actually, the wait, wait, I have a great picture for you. I'm, I'm going to post this. This is how, exactly how the summit's going. Oh I'm going to God. post it in the Twitch chat. That's how the summit is going right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was just posted on Reddit. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> okay, moving on because we're not getting into that. Uh, yeah. America, you fucked up, and we're not getting into it. Ashley asks. <laughs> How would you change the freelancer to make it stand out more? Well, Ashley, um, oh God, where is it? It's right here. Buy a Max. Uh, uh, no, I would do uh, this. Uh, one second, let me let me. Uh, here it is. Option two done. Uh, make that visible. I'm seeing I would a do, frozen stream. Just yeah, I know, here. I know. Sorry, it was frozen while I did this. I would do this to okay. make the uh, freelancer uh, stand oh, out God. more. Oh God. Done. Freelancer oh, stands out more. I got to I mean, Thanks. you're not wrong. You aren't wrong, but it's it's a it's very aggressive for a transport ship, no? No, it's beautiful. Okay. Okay. It is beautiful. Also, the turrets have a better firing arc that way. 
I, I just, I love that ship. I love it. I love it. Okay. Uh, next question. <laughs> uh, I, I like how Paul left when I, when I put that up. Uh, Kila, Kila Lion asks, are they going to add a combat drone? Uh... Drones, yes. We have not seen anything combat related for drones. They've all been industrial helpers so far. Yep, uh, they've confirmed that the uh, the the reclaimer is going to have drones. So yeah, drones but they're salvaging drones. Are they, though. are they salvaging or scout drones? They're scout. They're salvaging drones. Okay. Um, we might see scout drones like those uh, imperial mm -hmm. or empire droids from star wars but uh i don't think we'll see any i don't think we'll see any full out um combat ones at least not a lot there might be some especially in the campaign but i don't know we'll see uh hey everyone see, we'll stay hydrated drone. stay yeah. hydrated stay hydrated bot is uh reminding everyone to drink more beer it is or it coke is zero here. Uh, Amontillado asks, how would you like to see in-game reporting implemented? If you're going to be a news organization, what tools would you most like to have in Star Citizen? I'd love to have the ability to actually get broadcast in the bars yep. and stuff. Even if you have to like book time ahead of time in some kind of schedule, that would be really cool. So... Um, one of the things that's that's been really interesting to me is the implementation of faceware. Because uh, uh -huh. for the longest time, I didn't like the idea of doing newscasts from inverse because the characters are... It wouldn't look like you're doing anything. But if I can go inverse with my character and have like Shiver act as the cameraman with camera controls to broadcast me sitting at a desk doing my speech and and it'll follow and like speak as me and that can be shiver what i i no what? no I way just... in a million years there has any computer on this planet that could do the fidelity to render what you say the way you say it in real time over a network when they to do that in single player games, they have to sit there with very powerful technology to get lips to move. To but sit no, Faceware is doing. Faceware is well, doing pretty Faceware damn well. Faceware does not have the resolution to track the movement of your uh, light lips that accurately. Not in a million bloody years, mate. Close enough. But it's know? better. It's better than you. Saw, okay, put it this way: Why, if that was the case? When they were doing uh, motion capture for Squadron, why yeah. did they need those fucking huge no, no, cameras? No, shiver, 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 the... shiver. I'm not saying it has to be 100% accurate. I'm saying the mouth is going to open and close when mine does. And if I can get mm -hmm. that, yeah, yeah. if it can look even slightly realistic, I'm in for it. I don't care if it gets every single inflection because I do a lot of inflection with my face. It's kind of weird. But I'd it like it to like not... It's like a karate movie, though. I'm okay with that. We'll see. Okay. I mean... the. the... You got to remember that this this is not new technology. They they had this in EverQuest two. Mm. So but I want was, that. It, was it perfect? But it wasn't. It wasn't perfect. But you could still go, hey, my and, name is Paul. Yeah, and it would do something like that. It's it's close enough that it's like. That it's you, it's you, better it's than looking. Uh, it's what? Believable, but at the same time, it, it'll probably desync every once in a while. So I'm talking, and it's like. And that's uh, the news today. Bulkheads. Bulkheads you know? had to use helmets. Because you can't look at just a face. Like, there's a difference between looking at a face and not speaking. Shiver, can you speak for me and just look at my face? Jesus Christ, now you've put me on the spot. I haven't got a clue what to say. It's really difficult, especially when you don't blink. Oh, there you go. You can blink. I'm surprised at that. Now drink some water. That's what humans do. Pretend that you're on trial and everyone's staring at you because of your privacy policy. And everyone is disgusted at the way you've been conducting yourself. Wait, that's actually real life. Everyone is disgusted at the way you've been conducting yourself. So I, I'm running out of things to say at this point. At this point, it's just going to become abuse. And I don't really want to just abuse you live on the internet. I mean, this is my first day back and all, but it's been a while. So what What more do you want from me? I'm not that's ordering it. a pizza. It's just, I, I want something more than that. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. More than Good. more than talking like, yes, my name is Paul. Yeah. How are you more doing? than the, the head bobs. Yes. Yeah. I am engaged in this conversation. <laughs> the only experience and the only thing that I can get across to you is me nodding my head. Eris, now Fatcorp is gonna make it on the rest. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Um, we Mr. have ten questions in yeah. twelve minutes. I'm, I'm so. working. Here we go. go for it. <laughs> Mr. Squarepeg, now that Valve is making hardware, what do you expect out of them? What are your thoughts on HLVR? Nothing at all. Um, Valve's making hardware? Yeah, they're making... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are they making? The Consoles, five, controllers, VR. Some things. They, they are working with their companies, but they are, like, testing the, the, the hardware. Let's go. Like, as so opposed they, to the, console the away HTC now. Vive, there's going to be a Valve VR headset? No, HTC and Valve are working together on the HTC. Okay, then, it's yeah, it's my, my thoughts are the same as they were last time of uh, Valve has to start actually putting out something. Uh, the biggest problem in VR right now is um, the Oculus Rift is a shitty, shitty headset with a company that develops and puts out great, great games and locks them behind uh, its platform. Uh, it is not open. Valve has done nothing to support VR and they need to if VR is gonna flourish because VR, like consoles, need to be an open platform. All of this exclusivity bullshit just hurts everyone, especially in a closed system and and such a tiny system as vr and and i'm not just calling out oculus on this sony as well all of these psvr exclusives hurt the market period punto e basto andiamo yeah uh, it's by it's it's vive um oculus and sony Oh, yeah. What I'm excited about is that Valve announced that they're going to try and start making games again, mm -hmm. <laughs> which <laughs> I had pretty much I had pretty much written off as like because they fired all their writers last year and they like most people were laid off. And uh, I was like, J JD oh, Fart, it? JD Fart, uh, that's actually incorrect. All of uh, Vive, all of um, Steam VR is open source. All Oculus would have to do is implement it into their own store and let people buy through their own store games that are supported by vive they could do that they won't whereas on steam every developer can make every single headset supported that is the difference it's that oculus w i i would love to buy some of the rifts games with my vive i literally cannot they will not work with it, and that is a hundred percent Oculus's fault. It is not Steam's. Period. Done. Um, Triangularity asks, "How would you? Or sorry, would you also like to see a new segment coming out, uh, specifically interviews with developers that ask more of who they are, what they do for CIG hobbies, favorite colors, etc. Uh, Get to know your devs." They had that, that is called Meet the Devs, and they ran it for a very long time, and then they ran it to people to interview and ended it. Um, and they, it's come back in various forms multiple times. I mean, it probably will again. Make it more interesting. I want to know who they want to kill, how they would kill them, um, and what their favorite food is. Oh, okay. Uh, next question is from Ashley. Will we be able to forget that we have overclocked our weapons so much to make them draw over a thousand watts of power? Yeah. Uh, sure. Yep, I'd say so. Uh, Fastcart asks, Eris, isn't GoFundMe a wonderfully bug-free platform? Oh, God, no. Fastcart and I have actually been having a shit of a time trying to get the funds that were raised to Fastcart. Uh, it's a long story. It's going to work out, but it's it's been trying. Um, Fastcart also asks, has the wall of thanks been updated recently? Yes, we updated it this week. Thank you to Fastcart. Thanks. Uh, Haramis asks, did you know that Tide Pods are poisonous and shouldn't be eaten? That is something everyone should be well aware of. But you do get a nice clean inside. 
Fastcart asks, Paul, can you show me where you took that picture of that fleet of carts and take me to its leader? <laughs> it was at the, um, the Austin Convention Center, um, and it's right by the information desk in the Austin Convention Center. So it's, it's quite literally a fleet of fast cards. I saw it's that. Exactly the same card. So, uh, you are, it's, why do I need to take you to it? You, you know, you just command them with your, with your mind. <laughs> uh, Stormy asks, Shiver, how did you survive your dark days of disconnection from the World Wide Web and we missed you? I missed you and I went outside and let perfect strangers abuse me in uh, person, uh, say they have had intimate relations with my mother and question my sexuality and that made it all better. Paramus asks, in the latest Calling All Devs, uh, they spoke about power plant categories, civilian and competition. How far has CIG deviated from their former size categorization and how many other categories are there? Wasn't it on a similar basis to the uh, guns, like you had size one to, pro I don't know what the upper limit was. I'm just gonna say 10 as a number uh, for capital ships. Uh, how's it changed? Do you say? Well, it, it didn't. They're simplifying it, as I understood it. You know this, Terramus. You're being a bastard. Um, they're simplifying it, so basically the life support isn't going to be as much of a complicated component as your engine, where it's got so many different kinds of things. You can overclock it, tune it, put power into it. Whereas your life support, they want it to just be relatively simple because you've probably got enough to worry about, but it will still be there. I don't know if that answers the question. On a side, so probably not deviated much because, you know, this this is as first as this is like one of the first times we've heard about life support. So, uh, Ashley asks, how fast is fast carts fast cart? Uh, that would have to go to fast cart. Hey, fast cart, how fast is your cart? I will say this: It's faster than you. Th it's not as fast as you as you think, but uh, not as fast as you hope, but faster than you think. Sounds right. Uh, we have. Do we now have a? Go ahead. Fastcart says uh, to the community, "Thank you for all your continued support." I'm still at a loss for words over what happened this week, but rest assured, I am filled with gratitude and amazement. You've restored my faith in humanity. That's I what we do here, really. Before that goes. <laughs> uh, Brivals asks to shiver. Do you think we need to see more of Melissa? Yes, I I want a calling all Melissa show. I want Melissa around the verse. I want reverse the Melissa Strada. And on Sundays, I want to know who she'd like to kill. Probably me. How she'd like to kill me, and what her favorite drink is. Uh, Sable Ram one. Uh, Eris, you realize you still owe me a shirt from the last INN stream, right? Wait, what's INN? <laughs> I mean, it sounds slightly familiar, but not ringing any bells. Sorry, man. That was a while ago. Um, you should probably get that minute shirt. I mean... INN should probably get him a shirt. <laughs> what? Where? Uh, <laughs> Brivals asks, uh, which LMG would sorry, which LMG would be your preferred weapon to use in the PU? The one that fires slower with lower re actually I hate LMGs. I think they're freaking useless. And uh, neither. Uh, well. My personal preference, I uh, I did like the one that was a little bit longer ranged. Um, I do sometimes like LMGs. They can be useful for uh, things like covering fire. And uh, to rain down terrifying death on large groups of enemies. Sounds about right. Okay. Uh, Nakara? Space? Yay! Uh, yeah. So, Space! I'll be um, right back. I Go. wanted to specifically make sure to carve out some time today because uh, we have one of our uh, one of our dear robotic friends is in danger. Um, 
the Mars Opportunity rover uh, is currently trying to weather a very large dust storm. Uh, this is not usually a big problem for Curiosity because it has um, a uh, basically very, very simplified uh, nuclear power. Um, it uses the heat from a radioactive source to produce power. But the old Mars Opportunity rover, which has now been on Mars for 14 years, think about that, um, is solar powered and uh, is currently trying to get through this dust storm without completely losing all power. Um, unfortunately, the surface of Mars is very cold, so if it does lose all power, it might freeze, um, and that might be the end of Opportunity. Um, opportunity did phone home today, this morning. Um, and they're still hoping, but sometimes these dust, dust storms can go on for a very long time. Um, there's some hope here, though. In 2007, there was a massive, massive dust storm that they thought would kill both of the rovers, um, Spirit and Opportunity. Um, but both of them survived that one. So hopefully, uh, 11 years after that, um, they can, uh, the Opportunity rover can survive again. I, I remember um, correctly, some of those dust storms actually cleared off some of the solar panels as well, even though they thought it covered the solar panels, clear off some of the dust. Yeah, yeah, the biggest the biggest danger isn't necessarily after, it's during the actual storm, because there's, like, no power getting, or mm -hmm. hardly any power getting generated by the rover. Um, so they basically have stopped all science operations. They stopped taking pictures several days ago. Um, after they basically took one picture to confirm that they had like almost no sunlight <laughs> reaching the ground. Um, and, uh, they're basically in a wait and see mode. I think they're asking opportunity to call home once a day to make sure that it's still working. Um, um, and yeah, so for the, for the uninitiated, um, opportunity landed on Mars on January 25th of 2004 and has continued operating uninterrupted since then. How long was it supposed oh. to last? Uh, 90 days. And how many days has it lasted? Uh, we're just over 5,100 days. Um, it was, it was, Someone it predicted landed. it was going to take 90 days to die, and it's still going. Yes. That's familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this way. That was yeah, amazing. The, rover, the rover landed on Mars in 2004. The rover landed on Mars in 2004, and it's still operational it's and still, still doing good science. Um, now, the other uh, thing I want to talk about, I, I Nicara, know I didn't mention that wasn't... I, I, have gonna... to I have to interrupt you here. Uh, okay. Because, uh, sadly, quite sadly, most of our viewership is American. Um Oh what's, dear God! What's no, no? Oh, hang on. This is this is something <laughs> important. This is this is genuinely important. What the hell is NASA's budget? Twenty. The new budget or the old budget? Old budget. The old budget about nineteen billion, sometimes a little less. Uh, how infinitesimal is that? It's le it's about less than half of one percent of the U.S. budget. And what can NASA do with less than half of a percent of the U.S. budget? Basically okay. what they're doing now and nothing more. So what would happen if Americans went to polls and started voting for, you know, people who uh, appreciate and approve of science who would, uh, you know, grow NASA's budget? Can you imagine? What, what would happen if NASA got... Uh we would have a manned space program again. Let me, let me put it this way. There was, uh, there's a belief that NASA, publicly, people believe that NASA takes about 1%. That's the public perception. The reality yes. is, is that if NASA had 1% of the budget, uh, put 1% of we the- We would end, already be on Mars. We, we would be, we'd have a base on Mars yep. and the yeah. moon. Easily. Because because I, I, that's I that's don't one know. penny I, I... of every dollar, one penny. And it actually started a movement called the, the penny for NASA um or penny for space that which, has always been the big pitch is please get us to one percent and, and at its peak nasa was like 10 percent of the budget bank yeah. bank show mm, asks huge. why not privatize why do you think that nasa has been so good to spacex they are actually because that is basically their only way forward at this point 
because, because they don't budget get enough has, money. Their budget has been almost completely flat for about 40 years. Also, and not to mention that their budget is also heavily politicized. Mm. No one at NASA thinks that the SLS is any good. The SLS is oh, out, they 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 will, they will hell. say they will say you will never find someone at NASA who says anything against SLS, but well, not many people. Um, but there are a lot of people that don't like how much of NASA's budget is taken up by SLS, and it's politicized. Seriously? The biggest problem with SLS is not the fact that it exists, but the fact that. Um, First of all, the Senate is the ones who told them how to build it. Yeah. Um, they told them they had to reuse the shuttle engines that they had left over, which meant that they had to build the rocket around these engines that are like 40 years old. Um, the other problem is that um, in order to get enough support in Senate and Congress for the SLS project, um, you had to build part of it in every state so you could get that state's representatives to support it. And so it's being built in all 50 U.S. states. So are, are, com are contributing uh, parts to the um, rocket. Yeah. This does not work. I hate to say um, anyway, it, America, but, but I, I NASA, would really like NASA, to... NASA's more important than you. More to the point, my, big, my biggest thing that bothers me is that, you know... Uh, wait, they gave, Carlos they gave, asked they gave, they gave, SLS, SLS, what? SLS is what? Uh, Space Launch System. It's their new rocket there that uh, NASA is building. Uh, their main contractors are Boeing and Lockheed, Lockheed, and it is going to supposedly take humans back to the moon. Boeing keeps saying that they're going to Mars with it, but no one knows how that would ever happen because <laughs> it's not designed to do that. And, so, and it's also important to remember yeah. that the, the, um, the Falcon Heavy is only slightly smaller than the SLS? Uh, the first version of the SLS, yeah, it only is about six tons less payload capacity. Yeah, and the Falcon Heavy is almost entirely reused. And the Falcon yes. Heavy is already launching. It it's has well, launched. Launched. Not, only, not only that, if you launch it, even in its expendable configuration, which they probably would never even do, it's um, still eight to, eight, at least eight times cheaper than an SLS launch. So you seriously, um, you can, and, and you can launch two or three of them, I, build a, yeah. a, a a build a a uh, spaceship in orbit, which is what we've done with the with the uh, with the, uh, the 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 space station, and then yep. shoot it to Mars, and it yep. would still be cheaper than the SLS. And I and I no really really problem. hate to bring this up, because this is supposed to be all about Star Citizen, and nothing else. But I'm not American; I can't vote in your elections. But to all of you Americans out there, you can. And guess what? I really want NASA to have more money. So I would yep. really appreciate it if y'all, I even use y'all. I'm, I'm going to give, I'm going to give you a, 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 an unfortunate fact. The people who support NASA and support going to the moon um, or going to Mars are in public polls are about 30% of the population. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So we got to start talking. Hey, if every of people look at space and space travel and they say, well, what's in it for me? They look at a yeah. rocket, they go to space. I don't give Do you guys a like aluminum foil? If it weren't for space travel, we wouldn't have... Hey, uh, Shiver, have you ever used uh, aluminum have foil? Have Velcro. Uh, uh, let's just, let's not go down the how many things has, has space travel right, invented road. Because it's I, everything. everything. It's everything. The, the, it's um, either either directly or indirectly, but the 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 real reality is is that if we had infrastructure in space, it would be bringing a lot more resources and a lot more yeah, absolutely to the to the to to the planet. yeah. Um, it would it's just like building the highway system in the United States. Without the highway mm -hmm. system, we wouldn't be able to have trucks tra traveling from the coast to the in inner workings of the United States, exactly, or even from our neighbors Canada and Mexico to make a lot of to make cheap goods available for people who wouldn't. I have a little bit of a, just a tiny, tiny tidbit for people to get an idea of what could be done if we can actually get this moving forward properly. Um, uh, Hayabusa 2, a Japanese spacecraft about to reach an asteroid, a near-Earth asteroid, to do some sample collection. Um, Planetary Resources estimates that specific asteroid is worth about $86 billion. 
if you can figure out how to mine it. It's one asteroid, and it's not big. It's not very it's large. Small comparison. America, nobody yet has any control over the asteroids, but you <laughs> could do it. You could bring asteroids home. Make asteroids American again. Make <laughs> asteroids that, great again. Then, Mega. Make <laughs> asteroids <laughs> great again. They're not free. Go okay. liberate the oil on the asteroids. Okay, well, we're... we're the last no thing, wait, I know we're over time. The last thing I wanted to mention, because I, I was planning to talk about this, is the only SpaceX thing I was actually going to bring up. Um, but it was discovered by space journalist yesterday. Uh, SpaceX is building a very large campus at Ken Kennedy Space Center. Um, big plans for expansion there, including a 300-foot-tall launch control tower. Um, that should be really cool stuff to see in the future. And they're also building a rocket garden, their own rocket garden, so they can put their own uh, old uh, retired rockets um, on display at Kennedy Space Center. So, yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's it for the today, guys. Thank let's, you. Let's quickly round this up, lasso it, and send it to the moon. Sure. Anything else this week? I've got a little trip on Thursday uh, up to a place called Wilmslow. Have you ever heard of it? They've got an office there called Foundry 42. Never heard of it. Popping in. No idea what it is. Uh, I'll be popping in there and let you know what happens next. Cool. And if you happen to be a Patreon of uh relays at the ten dollar or actually i think it's at any tier you'll be in our patreon chat i don't even know how this works uh i think it's ten dollars uh ask shiver some questions and he's gonna try to ask them at wilmslow uh nakara anything from you you put me on the spot man yeah uh not that i can think of at this particular second okay paul what am I doing? What am I? What, what's going on? What's what happening with is you? something happening with you later today? Yes, um, I'm going to unfortunately have, um, fortunately or unfortunately for the for the viewers, I'm going to this man, this man over there. Uh, in your Just hands. Chat or in discussions for Captain Stable. Um, we actually have a really cool Captain Stable. It's uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. GMT. Two hours from um, now. It, two hours from now is going to be Eris. Hashkaha. Um, uh, HG Vertigo. And um, we should probably mention the E3 thing. I'm going to. Um, and um, uh, Nighthawk Sale. So it's a very interesting cat. Uh, expect more drinking, uh, more cursing. Uh, less actually on topic with Star Citizen uh, at all. Um, Which is surprising because we weren't all that on topic today. Yeah. <laughs> so. Seriously, join us for that. Uh, the Astro Pub is where the love happens or the magic or the marmalade. I don't know. Something happens there. I'm not really sure something what happens there. Yeah. Uh, Marmalade's delicious. That said, we are also doing something special. We didn't do it today because it was during our podcast, but we will be live streaming, I believe, uh, before, during, and after every single E3 presentation from here on out. We're starting tomorrow with Microsoft at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I think it's, I think Paul's joining us. Mm -hmm. uh, and myself and Jake and Dolvac, I believe, uh, are going to yell, yep. and I'm going to see what I don't. I don't. I honestly don't know what's going on. Jake has organized this, and Jake is running it. So uh, if everything uh, catches on fire, thank him. But join us to uh, talk about and make fun of E3, because uh, yeah, we're going to be doing that, and there's also going to be drinking during that. Join oh, us. Check us. There is going to be so much drinking during that. Because I believe Ch I believe we're doing Microsoft, and then we're also doing a Bethesda later later in the evening, and then I'm, we may be doing it on Monday as well. Oh um, yeah, Monday's and... happening. I've, I'm taking Monday off. We're doing tomorrow so... Monday. I think we're doing Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Like I think the plan is to do every single E3 except for EA today. So I, join us. I maybe I will be there for most. Um, there's some things I have to do, but at the same time, it's like, I plan on not drink, stopping drinking from 
from yes. 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. So oh, if yeah. you want to see see a very loose Paul talking stuff about <laughs> video games. You- loose all of us. We're all loose. Everyone's loose. Keep it loose. Our data girls oh, boy. Us. Keep it serious. Keep it real. Uh, don't harass anyone. Don't threaten violence on anyone. And if you feel like you're lost or out of control or don't know where you are, or don't know who you are, or are worried about anything, please talk to someone. Talk to me. Talk to anyone. There are numbers in every single country that you can call. You are loved. You would be missed. And, yeah, we love you. Love you guys.